Hey, good day, everyone. I'm Rob Espero with the Viral Volley Podcast and College Volleyball Weekly Beach Edition. Only me, not with Charlie, not with Mads, but instead I've got Lexi Denberg of UCLA Beach today. Hey, Lexi, thanks for joining me today. Of course. Thank you for having me. Oh, it's always a great honor to be able to speak with you, especially, uh, well, even better when you're in the same neighborhood, but apparently I missed that opportunity, which we were talking about earlier, but um, hey, some big news coming out, but you know, before we get to the, the big news for you, I wanted to take this opportunity, being that the Olympics just concluded, just do an Olympic beach breakdown, CVW style, because I know you track all these players, you played against them, you played with them, you probably looked up to some of them, but I wanted to get your thoughts as a collegiate beach athlete on what happened this last Olympics. So uh, let's start off with the most obvious, you, closest you would have been teammates to, uh, Sarah Clays, I'm sorry, Kelly Clays and Sarah Sponsel, um, you know, which are College Volleyball Weekly guests and friends of the show. But um, obviously, big deal for them to qualify for USA to get that second spot. Yeah, I can, that's insane. Like, I, cause I remember I was like watching, I watched like almost all of their games, I think. And just for them to like be at the Olympics was just insane. I mean, you can clearly tell like how much work they've put in. And like, I mean, it paid off for them to get to the Olympics. Like, that's such a big accomplishment. It's insane. Now, being closer to um, Sarah's age, I, I'm sure you'd seen her pretty regularly, especially when doing recruiting trips at UCLA and uh, and even probably at, got a couple of practices in with her. Like, what were your thoughts of being able to spend that time with her and what you see in her as an athlete that she is? Yeah, well, OK, so when I was like before I committed and then even like after I committed too, I like looked up Sarah like I still do. Like I look up to her so much and when I when I went on my official she was there and like honestly I was just like in like it was just going it was crazy because I was like <laughs> like Sarah Spence was right in front of me um but yeah it was it was really cool and just being able to watch her in the Olympics and like I watched her and like I think all the national championships and she's so fun to watch and for her and Kelly to be able to go to the Olympics and like in the middle of COVID and just go through so much like adversity I think that was just so cool now um I know that uh it's tough for you guys from UCLA to talk about USC athletes like Kelly Clays but I mean just the the uh, tandem together is pretty powerful I mean they were technically on the outside looking in to qualify for the USA but yeah um, what did you as a player see from that scenario going into the Olympics I mean I just saw them like because I remember the um tournament they're playing in um when they like qualified for the olympics i think they found out that like carrie and broke lost or something and i just think it's it's like that is like just such a like a dream for like i'm sure it was for them and for them to be able to like just work so hard and then for it to pay off and for them to like they i mean they won that fivb and then the next one they played in they did really well and like uh, it's just insane that they were able to do that yeah well we have to jump to another usc athlete but you know i, I think that we although you saw her a bunch of times this year and came out on the other side <laughs> against her tina gradina who got to represent uh, latvia this year but i mean so such a history maker that you got to personally experience uh, but i'm sure that you guys also have a really great relationship since you guys play against each other so often in yeah. practice but yeah, uh, what oh are your gosh. thoughts on what, what she did this year? Oh, uh, Tina, I don't even know where to start. She is so, first of all, she's so nice. Like, she's such a sweet person. And, like, I have no, like, absolutely no bad things to say about her. Like, she is so fun to play against. And, like, after we were, every single time after we were done playing, like, great job, hugs. Like, you guys are so good. Like, so fun to play against, stuff like that. And for her to, like, go to the Olympics and, like, not, like they got fourth like that is so good and like they they were so close to like making it to the finals too and I just think that's such an accomplishment for her and for USC and even for like just college beach volleyball like that's insane for her to do so well at the Olympics but yeah I have no no bad words to say about her she's so sweet well this is such a unique time period I believe for collegiate beach volleyball because there's some great personalities that are playing in the game, like TCU's pair, uh, uh, Tanya and Daniela. Yeah. And then there's you and Riley, who I met a couple summers ago. Tina, you got the Norse twins. I mean, 
between Zana, Savvy. I mean, so many names. Like we go across the nation, you know, you know, Kristen and Taryn and and all the FSU girls. There, there's so many great people, and there are great ambassadors of the game who are intense competitors, but also are so just they have a great uh, volleyball IQ. And um, uh-huh. I mean, what do you feel like's brought the play to the level that it has, especially within the last few years? I think it's just the how we were raised and like the level around us is always getting better. And now as like, we're getting older, we're getting so much more experience at a younger age. whopping 20 and and 21. That's crazy. Yeah. It's insane. (laughs) And like, I mean, the volleyball is so good, but I feel like what's more important is that like, it's so like just fun and it's great volleyball. And like these people, like you just said, like, they're so nice and like win or lose, it's like such good sportsmanship and still being able to like, look across the net and say like, great job. Like, I love playing you. Like that was such a fun game. I feel like that's way more important than like a win or a loss is like the relationships that we're all developing throughout like this whole process. And like, as we get older, I mean, it's just getting better and better. So I think that's so cool. Yeah. Well, let's go to our last pair of Olympians on the women's side, but April and Alex accomplished a pretty incredible feat. Actually, April now completes her medal set. So she has one of each color, but and the way they just marched through that tournament oh was gosh. phenomenal. Thoughts yeah. on their play? They literally crushed it. Like, I I watched every single one of their games. And, like, you can just tell that, like, they came to play, like, every single time. Like, they did not take a mental break. They did not take a physical break. break. And, like, you can just tell that they were so locked in and so ready. And that, like, no matter who they were playing, whether it was, like, a team that they were expected to be or whether like it was a tougher team, you could just tell that like they treated every single team the same exact way. And it, I mean, it paid off. Well, it's definitely some good stuff to watch, especially since uh, April is a Costa Mesa, California resident. Whoop, whoop. Newport <laughs> Harbor high school witnessed all this going on firsthand. So it was really cool to see her go through her career. And Alex got to meet back in 2015, 16, when she's wearing the USA women's national team indoor uniforms so uh you know definitely when worlds collide man they just went off and exploded big time uh, in this olympics so now let's let's talk more about you now i know you probably hate talking about yourself but i mean the fact of the matter is you had a pretty incredible career so far i mean technically you've only had two set well we'll say 1.5 seasons at ucla <laughs> but you start off with lindsey sparks uh, in your first year going nine and three in this last season with Savvy Simo, 28 and eight. Um, what was the key to success for you this, this season at UCLA? I think this season, our team culture, I think really brought us together. I mean, it's not for any team. Like, I don't think it was easy. And looking back on it, I think I realized that more just like how much we accomplished and how much we got through. Like, cause when we're in the situation like it it didn't seem like bad it just like we were just it seemed like we were just going like dude life was just happening but like <laughs> looking back at it like we really did have to like sacrifice a lot for a season and like it in the end I mean it paid off like and we our team like we love each other so much and I've had some of the best memories of my life with those girls and like I think that's really what separated us from a lot of other teams you know, this the season I was looking at the losses that you had and it was four times to, uh, I mean, Latvian Olympian, Tina Gradina and Megan Kraft, four times. You got LSU's Taryn Cloth and Kristen Nuss, three times. That's, uh, and then you had what the, the, the loss against Cal Poly, Poly. Uh, yeah. Macy Gordon and Emily Sunny. I mean, those are, if, if there are quality losses, those are quality losses. But I believe that even that Cal Poly one was at that center of effort challenge at Cal Poly. And that was a, a three setter and it went extended. Is that correct? Yeah. So, I mean, you're definitely up there with the big dogs competing and taking down a lot of them as well. So uh, great season. Let's, let, let's move Thank over you. to the Pac-12 Beach Championship, which is hosted at Mapes Beach at UCLA. And you had USC's number twice there. And uh, uh-huh. yeah, talk about the team effort there, because I mean, working that event on the host, Mike, I mean, those are some of the most exciting duels that I'd seen between you and USC. Yeah. Oh my gosh. It was so fun. I mean, I think every time we played them, it was just like, other than probably the first time, I think we just learned so much after every time we played them. And I mean, in my head and I know in Stein said too, like, 
I knew that we like we're, we were going to get them sometimes like we were going to be able to learn and learn from our mistakes and then execute our game plan. Um, but yeah, to like be able to play them at Pac-12 was like, and even like every other team there, like it was so cool. And like, that's something that I've never like experienced too. So it was just so like, and especially for it to be at home, like it was so great. And even though, I mean, we couldn't have fans, like it was still so like, it was so fun. And like our whole team was there and like, people we love and it was just so fun to be able to compete and play them um yeah definitely it was good memory well I have to say being there in person I feel like the the rest of the public who are volleyball fans were totally shortchanged because I mean the excitement the energy the atmosphere was so intense even in all the other duels as well because you have the standard uh, Cal Stanford you know rivalry matchups yeah. you know uh, you guys in USC a bunch of times and even like the matchups of Stanford and you guys Stanford SC I mean there were just so many classic battles and I feel like the quality of play has gone so much deeper in the different pairs would you say that's an adequate assessment oh, yeah I think so too I mean I think you hit it spot on like just the level of competition and even like the depth and just like the like the vibes there it was just like it was awesome it was great well let's let's move into obviously getting the winning the pac-12 championship and the automatic berth well i mean we all know that's an automatic berth if you win that term into gulf shores and uh can you share a little bit about that experience there for you oh my gosh gulf shores was such a dream like i like i feel like i was just like a kid watching the national championships at gulf shores and i was like Honestly, I couldn't even believe that, like, I was, like, <laughs> like playing there now, and it was just so, like, I remember there were, like, a few times, and even though, like, we couldn't have fans, it was, like, I would just stand outside the tent and, like, look at everything, and I'm, like, like, I, like, if this is actually real, like, I should, like, like, wow, I cannot believe this is happening, and, like, it was everything, like, that our team said it was going to be and, and more. Like, it was so great. And I still feel like I, I feel like I remember it, like, it happened yesterday. Mm -hmm. um, but I will literally, I'll have those memories for my whole life. You know, what's, what's amazing is watching it online because of COVID restrictions and so forth. I could imagine the potential of actually having a crowd there. Because, I mean, the vibe there of coming down to the fifth and final duel and it's you know, dual <laughs> deciding point. And I like, getting the chills just describing it. <laughs> yeah. So, oh my gosh. Uh, but I mean, it's still as great as it was for not having fans. I can only imagine what it'd be for you if there were. <laughs> yeah, it definitely was awesome. And I feel like, like the most, like obviously LSU, I feel like always has, LSU and FSU, I feel like they always have so many fans. So when it came down to like, like how you said, like the, Court number five, I think it was third set, us versus LSU. It was like, it was so crazy. And like, our team was like sprinting to one side on the side change. They were sprinting to the other side. And then LSU's fans were obviously going crazy on the side. And that was like, with just family members, I was like, I can't even <laughs> imagine like, like fans. Well, there were fans kind of lingering on the uh, chain link fence on the, the yeah. public beach area. So I thought that was classic. Like, you know, I'd probably be that guy if I were anywhere near that site. <laughs> <laughs> I know it was awesome. Now I I wanted to to backpedal a little bit because uh, you know I obviously met you playing with uh, a fellow Floridian uh, Riley Powers, but um, I mean Riley and Jane Whitmarsh who partner up in the number five spot. How big were they towards the end of the season for UCLA? Oh my gosh, we literally like our team name for them was Team Clutch, like and Team Scrap, but like they came in clutch so many times for us. <laughs> and at one point, I think we were like guys like thank you you're you're not gonna have to clutch like any more duels for us like we, we got you guys like thank you <laughs> and but they oh my gosh they saved us so many times I cannot even tell you I think they saved us at Cal Poly as well um against LMU as well and it was just like they did so well oh my gosh I cannot I like yeah they're awesome yeah well funny story about the Pac-12 championship in the championship match against USC uh, I'd actually got the video of the uh, dual winning point for Riley and Jaden and who texts me out of the blue Geeter and uh, Geeter you know longtime friends with uh, with Jane's late dad yeah. Mike Whitmarsh he's like I'm in tears dude I can't, I, I can't stop watching this and I'm crying <laughs> oh, that is so awesome 
So it's just funny, the volleyball family, you know, I know that that Gator just loves all volleyball, but I mean, I know the personal connection just made it that much more special for him and yeah. to see Jaden playing so well. Oh my gosh. Yeah. They did so well this season. So um, let's look back at the season as a whole. You garnered ABCA All-American for your, I don't know, second time, 1.5 time. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, that's a, it's a great honor for you. And, you know, I think Stein and spotting you and recruiting you definitely, you know, it was spot on uh, because extremely talented, but the level of play that you've been playing at has been pretty phenomenal to watch. Thank you. <laughs> I mean, I know you work hard because I obviously follow you on social and you, you track what you're doing and everything and the, the tournaments you're playing in. But, you know, at the beginning of the season, it was funny because when Stein asked me to come on board and MC and, uh, and host your guys' duels, he's like, watch this. And he's referring to you on your court. He's like, you want to see strong? And of course, you <laughs> belted one over the fence. You bounced it and went over the, the netting. He's like, that's the real deal, dude. <laughs> He's so funny. Oh my gosh. Yeah. But you know, there's definitely a, uh, I mean, not only are you quick and athletic, but I mean, there's like this physicality to your game that I feel like it's gone up at least a couple notches from last season. Um, what have you been doing? <clears throat> um, I mean, that's the goal. I, well, I love lifting. So I pretty much do that like all the time. Um, but I try and I'm on like a lifting, like weightlifting plan and, um I train a lot but I mean other than that I feel like I don't do anything special I just stay con consistent and yeah that's I, I mean I like I want to get better so bad <laughs> that I feel like it's <laughs> it's easy for me to just continue to like have this schedule and like do all this stuff um mm -hmm. but yeah I guess just staying consistent Great stuff. I thought when you say lifting, I was hoping that it would not be food like you've been hanging out with the Van Winkle sisters because you look at their Instagram feeds, it's like the worst <laughs> food. I'm like, how do you guys even stay in shape? <laughs> oh my gosh. They do eat some good food though. <laughs> Abby's also, like on our so team. Abby's food, like, <laughs> when, we're, when we travel, we're like, all right, Abby, your own food. You get us the best place and we'll eat there. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, let, let's move on to since the last final you took, because that's the last day of school, I imagine for you. But what have you been up to since then? I know that you had you started off the summer with the USA Volleyball Collegiate Beach uh, National Team. Can you talk about that experience and how you got connected into that? Yeah, I think that was actually my, I think I was, I remember I was taking, I was in school during that. So kind of oh. like, I mean, it was okay, but um, basically like, towards the end of our season, Stein had a few of us like um, make video, like highlight videos and send it to the USA people. And he was like, this is going to be such a cool opportunity. Like if you get picked, like this is going to be really cool. A lot of like great learning experience. So me and Savvy, I think I stayed up for like six hours one night, like making the highlight video. <laughs> And I would like rather do that. Which is probably I'm sure crazy. that was pretty easy for you. Cause if you look at my video that I post of you, I can seriously <laughs> post like 95% oh of what gosh. I get out of you. Yeah, I tr well, I tried to shorten it down a little bit, but so I sent <laughs> that to them. And then like, I think a few weeks later, they ended up like emailing us. Like, I think it was me, Abby and Savvy. And they were like, congratulations. Like, will you be there? Please accept or decline. Like everything will be paid for. Um, just let us know. And so I was like, oh my gosh, like, yes. Like I would love to do this. And so then um I don't remember what week it was but I think it was in June um we ended up doing that for a week and the like our coaches were Megan Schmidt and John Mayer and just learning from them was so cool I mean I love like getting different coaching and seeing different coaches like perspective and point of view and just different styles so that was awesome and not to mention like the girls oh my gosh the girls like first of all the level of play was insane like great practices. We trained in the morning and then we would come mm -hmm. back and train in the afternoon. And then between we would have, um, like meetings, like zoom calls. Um, so, I mean, we were, we were pretty busy like all day and mm -hmm. I mean, we got a little tired by the end of it, but it was awesome. And the girls were so sweet. It was such a great group. Um, but yeah, I think it really like modeled and embodied like our call, like college volleyball, because just everyone there was just 
so great. And yeah, it was a great learning experience. So fun. And USA Volleyball really like took it upon themselves to like make sure we were well fed. They did everything for us, like made sure we had everything we needed, paid for our hotel rooms. Like Mm -hmm. it was awesome. Well, I got to stop down there and missed you there, but, uh, (laughs) but it wasn't intentional. I promise. (laughs) But it's right there in Newland, Huntington beach. And, uh, Gosh, there were some really quality uh, athletes that were invited to this. So, I mean, I could imagine what kind of competition there was all through the week and uh, just the training that was going on. Um, Let's move into uh, what you've recently been involved in. And I happened to catch one of your media posts from July 9th of of playing with another Floridian who is a monster at Florida State. And I believe this was her true freshman year this last year. Is that correct? Maddie Mae Anderson Um, of Florida State. Yeah, well, she's the same age as me. Okay. So 1.5 senior, seasoner. Yeah. And, uh, but I mean, very similar style of play with both of you. Uh, I believe she's listed at 6'1, and you're right there around six foot six one, six two. I mean, who's blocking? Who's defending? I, I mean, both of you guys can literally hit the, the, the glue off the ball. So, <laughs> I, how's that well, working out for you guys? It's really cool because, like, I think one of our strengths is that, like, I've blocked full time. She normally blocks full time, but I've also split. She's also split. So I can play defense full time if I want. But if she feels like she's getting better reads or if I feel like I'm getting better reads on blocking, then I'll go up to block and she'll play defense. Or if she doesn't feel like running up, then I'll we'll split or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's cool because like we have like so many, like just a variety of defenses to show other teams. And um she's one of my best friends. She's so fun to play with. And in trials, which was, I think early July, Pri was our coach and she helped us a ton. She was so Mm -hmm. awesome. Um, but yeah, we just, and we wanted to like win that so bad. So we just like really focused on our game. And I remember one of the things Pri told us, I was like, I was like, Pri, I want to win so bad. And she's like, no, you want to win, but focus on, she said, this should be your mindset. Like, focus on, I want to play the best volleyball I've ever played. And so that's what we've started to focus on. And I thought we were playing great. Um, But yeah, so with her, I think I, I played defense full time and she blocked. Um, And it's fun because I mean, in college I blocked. (laughs) So it's like still learning how to deal with myself back there. You're still a little short of the savvy Simo Zanamuna defense, right? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> oh yeah I gotta learn from her but she, and Maddie Maddie was very patient with me um but yeah super fun to play with now I mean I, I believe that that you both play left side don't you well it's so, funny because when we played together last year we both played left side and then when we played together this year we ended up both playing right side mm-hmm. or it was flipped like last year we played right side and then this year we both played left side so I was like I'll play right side and so that's what I've been doing lately and then until we figure it out but yeah (laughs) just kind of went with it (laughs) now have you been playing in any other tournaments like avp americas next cbvas i mean i haven't really seen any results anywhere so yeah we played in well there was one tournament at the end of um the collegiate beach national team i think it was a cbva but i'm not really sure Mm -hmm. oh the reckless thing yeah, the reckless. It was we played. Um, I I was actually playing with Tori Van Winden. She's super fun to play with, oh, and we played another monster. Kirsten, <laughs> monster. Two monsters on the same team. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, literally. Um, and then we played Taryn and Kristen in the finals of that tournament, and we ended up losing. But um, that was a great tournament. It was so fun. And then I played in Atlantic City with Maddie, and I think we ended up getting ninth. Mm-hmm. We lost to the Brazilians. Um. But it ended up, I think those are the only two I've played in just because, mm-hmm. oh, and then trials, obviously. The Brazilians you're Maddie. referring to the Maestrinis? Look, yeah. L- okay. Lillian, Larissa. Yep. Um, but then, then we played in trials and I think that's honestly been like about it mm-hmm. for like AVP next and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, so then my first like AVP will be this weekend. And then, don't jump yeah. too far ahead <laughs> but yeah that the, I really haven't been playing as many tournaments I feel like I've been training a lot more than yeah. I normally have which is why I haven't been playing as many tournaments um but I've also been 
flying back and forth from Florida and California like quite a bit. So yeah, that five hour flight to LAX. Oh my wonderful. gosh. I mean, it is pretty it's pretty tough, but now I'm like getting used to it. But I'm also at the point now I'm like, what do I do with myself for five hours? Like <laughs> well, they do have that good screen entertainment right in front of you on the right plan. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Well, hey, let's jump ahead because I actually alluded to it a little bit in your response, but I mean, some big news and you know, I follow AVP, you know, as my, my side gigs, I'm, I'm the indoor collegiate beach guy. So Mike, but now that I have friends that are playing AVPs, I can't help but follow, but you know, one of my favorite players in the entire world is anyone with the last name Salgado. So that's <laughs> Carolina Salgado or Carol, but then her sister Maria Clara uh, announced that she'll be playing in Atlanta. And I saw the picture of you on there. And I was like, you got to be kidding. That is awesome juice incarnate. <laughs> so um, so tell me the story of how you and Maria uh, connected. So basically Stein had told me and because of like NCAA rules, like he's not like he's not allowed to set it up. So he had basically just told me he was like, hey, I think Maria, when she gets back from Brazil, she's going to be looking for a partner. Here's her number. Like, I can't do anything else, but like, you can text I her. I think she's looking for a partner. <laughs> yeah. And so I was like, I was like, okay, like, that would be really cool. Um, so I texted her and she was like, hey, yeah, like, um, I'm, I am looking for a partner. Like, when's the like quickest you could come out and train? So I think I was, it was right after trials, actually. So this was like mm-hmm. a little after, um, I don't know when, but it was. So she was like, when can you come out here? And I was like, next week, I guess. Like, I'm not yeah. doing anything. You're like, oh, fly me to Brazil? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I flew out there and we, like, that's when we started training together. And I hear and you I mean think, like in California, Hermosa Beach. Yeah, California, okay. Hermosa. Um, so I didn't know like what was going to happen, but I did know that it was like, it was great training. So I was like, I mean, as long as I'm getting good training, like, I, like it's yeah. okay. And so I didn't know that she was like gonna like ask me to play with her. Like I didn't know if she just wanted to train or like what she like wanted. Cause I knew that she was also training with other people. And I was like, like, I don't know if she'll ask me to play, but as long, like I'm just getting good training with her. Um, And then a few weeks went by and then we would still like train together. And I, she's so fun to play with. First of all, like I love training with her um she's also a great person but then she asked me to play with her and she was like she was like you want to do this and I'm like yeah like let's do this and um it was kind of tough because I had some partners for the other AVPs but I wanted to have like a set partner for each AVP I thought that would be cool and Mm -hmm. um so yeah then we just decided to play together but But what's that mean for someone like you? I mean, obviously she's uh, more experienced. I, I don't want to say the other word, but I mean, she definitely has quite the resume. She has two FIVB gold. She was uh, finished second in the FIVB 2013 world ranking, uh, ranked 22nd in the AVP right now. Um, she's without a doubt such a complete player. But I mean, from someone with, gosh, I think she's probably been alive two times more than you have. And, uh, but this ability to connect with her and share the court with her, what does it mean to someone like you? Oh my gosh. It's, it's so awesome. Like, I can't even describe how like just grateful I am to be able to play with her. And like, she has so much experience, like you just said. And I think that's for me, that's like what I want. Like, I want to see how she carries herself and how she plays. And I feel like that's kind of what I did with like Savvy this year. Like I watched her a lot and like, Uh, like obviously I played with her but like I watched how she carried herself and how she acted and just like everything and I feel like it's very similar with like Maria and she like she really like takes control of things and I I love that I think that's great she's very straightforward with what she wants which I love that like just like tell me where you need the ball and like I'll put it there and um but she yeah and she just has so much experience and she's so fun to play with but yeah, so I'm excited. That's a great, great partner for AVP, and it's great to have AVP back. Uh, you know, hats off to Donald Sun and his entire team. There are a lot of names to help him put this together this season. Even the uh, the Champions Cup last year that you know we got to see three of, but I mean this year in Atlanta, 
I'm looking forward to seeing you. And I believe you had shared with me that you and Maria have to go through the qualifiers. So um, hopefully someone's able to report or get some kind of video from there or Instagram live it or something. But um, I think it'll be phenomenal to watch you and Maria playing together and see who you get drawn up against, drawn up against in the, uh, the qualifier. Yeah. Yeah. I'm definitely excited for that. Cause I mean, you never know how it'll go, but all we can do is just go out there and play our best and hope that we can win these games together. But I don't know. I, I feel like we'll do, I think we'll do pretty well. She's, she's awesome. Yeah. Well, it's the same kind of fiery defender you've had behind you, you know, like Lindsay and, and Savvy at UCLA, you know, figures someone like that in the uh, international experience. So I know it could be a really, really fun experience, learning experience for you. Oh, for sure. I, I think so too. Now, um, what are your plans for the rest of the summer? Are you going to play in more AVPs or is this kind of more just a, uh, you know, just a thermometer to get a sense of like what it feels like? Uh, what, what do you got going on until school comes back in? Yeah, so I'm basically just going to, after this Atlanta AVP, I'm going to fly back to California and then I think me and Ray are going to train that week before I think Manhattan um, and then play in the Manhattan AVP and then... After that, I mean, just still keep training with her and just keep lifting. And then I think we're gonna go to Chicago and play. Um, then we might play in some CB CBBAs on the weekends, but yeah, for now that's the plan. Well, sounds like great stuff, Lexi. And uh, as always, it's such a great honor to speak to you and to see your career developing and forming, uh, not only at the club's level, but also at, the, at UCLA and now I guess it's official to say you're kind of semi-professional playing in an AVP this weekend. I don't know. We're trying to get there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Lexi, thanks for taking the time today with the uh, Viral Volley podcast. You know, I always have you on, you know. Uh, I think it's your third time or second time on here with me, but I appreciate you just talking about where uh, your volleyball career is taking you and and uh, how the what's happening in the world, you know, with all this stuff happening and, and uh, as you progress in your career. Thank you for having me. All right. Hey, everyone. This is Lexi Denenberg, All-American at UCLA Beach Volleyball, and now partnering up with uh, Maria Salgado over at AVP Atlanta. It's going to be hot in the ATL, but she's already familiar with that kind of weather because she's from Merritt Island, Florida, but she's in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, and I'm just thankful again for the time you'll to spend today and be sure to follow Lexi on Instagram. And uh, just check out all the stuff at UCLA Beach because uh, some good stuff with Stein Metzger and that crew over there. Uh, for Lexi, I'm Rob Espero. Thanks for uh, clicking in.